Okay, everybody. Uh, I knew I would get this going. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Uh, I'm Lee Merker from Jazz Times. Uh, I'm going to try to... <laughs> well, uh, Thank you very much. Next session is starting, so if you need to talk, can you step out in the hallway? Just step over the pit. And if you want to listen, please come in and sit down. Thank you very much. Because Lee was like 15 minutes into his presentation, and you guys missed it. I'm not used to yelling at people other than my daughter. And I can't really yell at her. So, uh, uh, one of the things we're doing today is, besides the workshops, which you just uh, were here for, uh, we're often doing short presentations, so we're sort of modeled on the TED Talks. And we, we look for people uh, who would just give us some, some ideas that would inspire us, uh, uh, people who are just thinking outside the box. We told them two things, speak from the heart, give us something to think about. Uh, well, in 10 minutes or less, that was like three things. Three things. So uh, our next uh, um, solo spotter is a, a man who uh, really did do his own thing. Uh, uh, in radio, and uh, he now has over 300 podcasts, and uh, how many? He has a million and a half downloads, um, and he did he did this without, you know, NPR, without BGO, without his local, you know, uh, radio station. He did this on his own. Uh, please welcome Jason Crane of the Jazz Center. Thank you. Thank you. So today's session is podcasts and interviews for folks as dumb as me, 101. And I'm just going to give you a quick uh, little overview of podcasting and some tips on interviewing. This is Amy Cervini uh, from Orange Grove Artists. She's also a singer, and she's agreed to be my helper today. Amy Cervini, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Amy's also been on the jazz session, as have Kyoko Kitamura and Sarah Manning. And uh, Pete Robbins is on today's show. Jerome Sabaw has been on. Vijay Iyer has been on. Ben Allison, who's still here, has been on. This is like a big jazz session reunion. And afterwards, we're all going out, and you're all buying me drinks. So, uh, first, a little bit about me. Oh, maybe I'll let you do the ripping, if you don't mind. This is, this is Microsoft's new PaperPoint program, which you should get. It's $495. It comes bundled with Windows. Uh, so I'm Jason Crane. We can probably rip the next one, since I already said my name. Uh, I started out as a saxophonist, mostly in the salsa scene uh, in the Southwest. And then I went into radio, starting in the early 90s. And now I'm a podcaster and a poet, which means I'm poor. And that's also alliteration or consonance, which is common in poetry. We can go to the next one. Yay. A lot of people don't realize that a podcast is actually an acronym for pretty ordinary, downloadable, chewable, and snazzy technology. Uh, you should take a note of this, because someday your kids might ask you, and you want to look hip. Uh, podcasting is incredibly simple, and for many people, they, they find it a little daunting. They don't even know what a podcast is, how they might listen to it. And so I'm here to, to take away the mystery. It is basically a way to get music or, you know, the sound of somebody talking or possibly banging a pan with a spoon into your ears. And it's very important that you know how this happens. You're so good at this. Uh, it is not necessary to have an iPod for a podcast, nor is it necessary to be wearing a cast for a podcast. You don't need either of those things. All you need is a computer that plays sound. Because all a podcast is is an audio file. It's the same as when you rip a CD into your computer. It's exactly the same kind of audio file. All you need is a computer that plays sound. If you have a podcast or perhaps a multimedia cast of some sort, that might be great, and then you can take it with you on the go. But as long as you can play music on your computer, you can listen to a podcast. Thank you, Vanna. Uh, my show is at thejazzsession.com. If you don't remember anything else that I say today, please remember this, because that's how I sleep indoors and eat. Uh, TheJazzSession.com has been going since uh, 2007. This is its fifth year. Next month will be its 350th show. One and a half million downloads. It says right now 330 plus episodes. By next month will be 350. All of them, every single one, is available for free online at TheJazzSession.com. Uh, this is all I'm going to say about my show. The rest of this is going to be about other things. But I do want to mention my show since you're here. Uh, so all of those are available. You can download them all, share them with friends. You can stream them on the website. They're all there for free, but the show is membership supported. Lee mentioned that I did this uh, on my own. I used to work in radio. I used to work at WGMC with my friend Derek Lucas right here. And uh, after that, I became a stay-at-home dad and decided one day I would love to be able to do what I used to do on the radio, interview people, but do it in my jammies. And so I sent out an email to all of the music promoters that I used to know saying, I have no budget and no audience, so please send me your artists. 
And luckily people did, uh, particularly Tina Pelican right at the beginning, um, who sent me uh, John Abercrombie as the third show. And kind of from there, things took off because people knew who he was, even if they didn't know who I was. And now 330-something episodes later, there's been everybody from Sonny Rollins a couple times and many other you know, big names that you would know, down to folks who were just starting out, which I think is really fun. And I think of the show as kind of an archive of what's been happening in the last five years of jazz. And hopefully it will be an archive of what's happening in the next bunch of years. So it is member supported if you want to become a member. And if you don't, that's fine too. It's free and always will be. Okay. Why I did the jazz session in the first place, and this is what the bulk of this little presentation is about, is that I think, and I, I hate to say this, but I think your music does not generally speak for itself. It probably does to a very small subset of the audience that's educated enough to understand what you're doing, and then a slightly larger subset of the audience that doesn't care if they understand what you're doing, but is willing, as actually Pete Robbins says in today's interview, to let the music wash over them. There are those people, absolutely. There are people who do not need the special knowledge that jazz, many people feel jazz requires, and they can just let the music wash over them. However, there's a reason that DVDs come with extras, that's because people want to know how things happen and why things happen and what the creative force was behind the artistic product that they're seeing. So I think it's incredibly important that you tell your story. A podcast is one way to do that. Uh, Well-written liner notes are another. A website with interesting videos or bio information. Many people do albums on artist share where you get a chance to, to let people see the process as it goes along. Anything that helps connect emotionally with the listener. Let's find out what's next because I don't remember. Oh, yeah. So this is a, uh, there's another person who's been on the jazz session, Faye Victor, who'll be speaking later today. Uh, many people know the album The Love Supreme. It's a John Coltrane album. It's a great record, and it's a record where the music does stand on its own, but it's even more impressive because John Coltrane, as we all know, had to fight and kill a dragon to make a Love Supreme. And once you know that, the emotional resonance of that album just increases exponentially.